Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today's video is all about some of the challenges that you might see when you're trying to purchase a condominium using a mortgage loan. Because uh, you know there's lots of good reasons to own a condominium, it might be a good fit for you. And so this is gonna talk about some of those things that, that you need to know about the landscape of, of what are the requirements that the condominium needs to make uh, meet uh, and, and how you can kind of avoid some of those deal breaker challenges uh, early on in the process so you're not wasting time you know, going down a path to a condominium that, that just can't be used, uh, that, that just can't be purchased with financing. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. And also, before we jump into that, uh, we, we passed 100 uh, subscribers, so uh, the channel is growing. Thank you very much, those of you that are supporting the channel. Um, if not, and, and if you, you found these, these videos and, and others that I've made helpful, uh, do hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, share it to somebody, uh, and, and I'll keep uh, producing some videos so long as I, I feel like it's uh, helping folks out there. So, but thanks to those of you that are, are supporting the channel. All right, let's jump in. So the first thing I'll tell you is that if you're wanting to purchase a condominium and you have the cash to just buy it uh, without any financing, um, basically none of these uh, challenges are going to uh, apply to you, right? So this really only applies if you're wanting to use a mortgage to purchase a con condominium. And you might wonder, well, why are there, there are these extra rules if I'm wanting to use financing? Here's why. Basically, in June of 2021, there was a tragic condominium that collapsed in Surfside, Florida. It killed almost 100 people and it injured a whole bunch more. And so um, in order you know, when they went to investigate and figure out, well, why did this happen? How do we prevent this kind of tragedy from happening again? What they figured out was that uh, there was a bunch of different reasons and they were all kind of related to the fact that uh, there was kind of a weak HOA and the the homeowners association was uh, you know is, had poor uh, financial condition. They were not tracking people down to make their payments on time. There was a, a bunch of um, deferred maintenance because if you're not getting people to pay their dues, you're not able to pay for the maintenance. Um, there were some inspections that happened that called out some big structural issues, and that that was also related to like you know salt water seeping in and and kind of corroding the structure. But anyway, it, it collapsed, and so the U.S. government decided to to prevent this from happening ever again, they are going to come up, uh, there's new, more strict, what are called warrantability rules, which dictate um, that for any kind of a conventional loan uh, and a conventional mortgage, um, what are some specific rules that are gonna be in place um, to, to ensure that we're only letting folks use mortgages to buy condominiums that are gonna be safe, that are in good financial condition, uh, and, and that are basically gonna, that's, that's what the warrantability comes down to, is it being safe for folks uh, and just like a, a good, decent place for folks to live. So let me talk for a minute here about what is warrantability and how is it get assessed before you can make that purchase with a mortgage, right? So um, warrantability is evaluated using what's called the like a Fannie Mae questionnaire. It's a questionnaire that comes from the US government. It's a standard document. It's in English and in Spanish, right? We send that document to usually to the homeowners association administration or a property manager, somebody that's working at that condominium. And we ask them to basically fill it out. Uh, currently at the time of recording this, it's like an eight page document, right? So I wanted to be clear though, that as the borrower or as the person shopping to make that purchase, it's not your responsibility to get all these answers. I'm just making this video so that you have an idea of what the landscape is, what to be looking for when you're shopping uh, so that you can be making an informed decision. So that Fannie Mae questionnaire, that's going to be sent at some point in the process to the condo association manager. Sometimes it's sent to a maintenance or, or like to a uh, property manager uh, who, who has access to the information that's needed. Um, and when that gets sent, it, is, it can depend, right? So obviously you don't wanna go super deep into a loan process to find out, oh, it's not warrantable. Oh, my deal just died after I've paid for appraisal, paid for title work, paid for all these things. Um, definitely wanna try to start this process and get this answer before you're even making an offer, right? So um, usually, uh, I've made another video uh, about this, but you can just ask the condo association manager um, because they're the person who'd be filling this form out if the condominium is warrantable um, for other folks that are making offers and purchasing them. But you can ask that person, is, is this condominium eligible for uh, conventional funds? You can also ask if it's eligible for FHA funds and for VA funds. Each of those two different entities, the VA and FHA, they have lists that they publish online. I'll put the links in the description of condominiums that are warrantable for, for those programs. But for, you know, just conventional loans, like not these government loan programs, um, there's not a list. And what's, you know, a condominium warrantability is a bit of a moving target because, you know, 
uh, as you'll see when I go through the criteria here in a moment, um, you know, it could change from one month to the next. And so it's, it, it is like, for that reason, a bit of a moving target. But here's the categories of things that are going to get reviewed so that you have that information and you can make a good decision for yourself. One section of the, the questionnaire and one category that they're going to look at is just the general stuff, like the name of the condominium, its address, how many units is it, um, what's the management structure, and when was it built or is it complete? Because sometimes a condominium is built in phases and um, one, one certain loan programs, you can only use them if it's all the way completed and other loan programs, you can use it if that phase is complete, but they're still building on the other ones. So that's just kind of the general category. Another category is how is the square footage space of the condominium being used? So uh, for it to be warrantable and to use a conventional loan uh, for, for the purchase, it needs to be 25% or less uh, of the square footage area of the condominium is used for commercial reasons. Um, you might see it really common that there's like, um, you know, there could be businesses or like a spa that's attached to a condominium or, you know, maybe there's like a, a hotel section, you know, where, where there's like a condo tell. There's all these different structures, but the idea for it to be warrantable is that it, it can have 25% or less of the square footage dedicated to commercial uses. Another category that gets reviewed is the financial soundness of the condo association. So um, one potential thing that they might want to review is the actual budget. They're going to want to see the numbers from the association manager themselves, and they're going to want to, you know, the lending team is going to review those numbers and make sure that it's financially sound. Um, they're also going to want to know uh, how many owners are delinquent 60 days or more um, on their association dues, because obviously, you know, if people aren't staying up to date with those dues, they can't pay for maintenance, they can't do special assessments and fix things. And so that's going to be a big question that they're going to review. Um, they're also going to want to know if the HOA is currently um, the, the target of any current litigation, right? Are there any lawsuits pending against the association, uh, especially if those lawsuits are for health or safety reasons, that would be a deal breaker, right? So if, if it's getting sued for health and safety reasons, that, that we're not going to have really a way to proceed. There can be lawsuits for other things. Like I've seen it that the association was getting sued for like a, a parking space dispute. Uh, all the fun things that you can run into um, if you're if, if you're in a condominium. But um, that, you know, the parking dispute lawsuit, that wasn't a deal breaker. We were able to proceed. But that the those are some of the things. Another thing uh, related to the financial soundness is that they want to know if any individual entities own huge shares of that condominium or like, you know, did a big um, investor group come in and buy like a huge chunk of those condominiums. Uh, so they want to know uh, how if there's any individual entities that own big chunks of the condo. Another aspect that's going to be under review is the insurance uh, on that condominium. So for example, not only if you're, if you're, you know, if you're purchasing with a mortgage, your, the, your unit, right? Your unit is going to need to have like homeowner's insurance. That's, that's one in, in types of insurance, but that's something that, you know, we, we would help with during the loan process. The more important question before you're making offers and giving deposits is, does the condominium complex, the whole place, the common spaces, the building and structures, do they have what's called master policy insurance? Um, master policy insurance is what covers you know, if, if right at the moment of signing, if there was some terrible thing that happened, heaven forbid, um, you know, that, that would, what, what would cover, um, you know, for hazard coverage, liability coverage to a certain extent. And so if that's not in place, that is a deal breaker. Your, the condominium has to have, um, the, the master policy insurance for typically for flood, for hazard and for liability for us to be able to use a mortgage to help you purchase it. The condo revision team will also evaluate the structural safety of the condominium. So they want to make sure that it's obviously it's health, you know, the health and safety of the condominium are not in question, that the maintenance is up to date, that they're, you know, if there are special assessments, they're going to want to know the nature of those special assessments and how they're getting paid for by, you know, the, the community members there. So that's a, a big one that they're, they're going to review. This next bit of things that are going to get reviewed is going to depend on what your intended use is for that condominium that you're purchasing, right? So the highest bar in terms of like the most regulations that are going to apply to your situation is if you're purchasing it as an investment. If you're trying to buy a condominium, you know, maybe you want to 
put it on Airbnb or, or something like that, short-term rental or whatever, um, that, that's going to set the highest bar in terms of warrantability. Um, if you are purchasing it as a second home, that bar is going to be a little bit lower. There'll be fewer requirements that we need to meet. And then if it's for your primary home, um, that's going to have the, the lowest bar, if I can put it that way, in terms of the requirements that you have to meet. So uh, let's look at if you're purchasing it as an investment property first, right? If you go to a condominium and you want to purchase it and the association manager tells you that, you know, more than 50%, it's like, oh, well, these are all just Airbnbs or something like that. Nope, sorry, it's not going to meet the requirements. So we're going to need uh, 50 per, less than 50% um, are, are investment type properties. Or another way of saying it is that 50% or more of all of the units are owner occupied. Also, too, if you're purchasing it as an investment, um, if you, you know, if it's an investment purchase with a conventional loan, that's going to require 20% um, down minimum, right? Um, but if you can put 25% down, that would be a way to avoid one of the main criteria, which is the budget review, okay? If you, meaning, if you are putting only 20% down, purchasing it as an investment property, um, the, the lender is want, gonna want to review the budget of the condominium. But if you can put 25% down, you waive that requirement and that's a, that's a whole uh, one less thing that's gonna need to uh, be reviewed and one less thing that can stand between you and making that purchase and getting that condominium. If you want to purchase it now as a second home, like you just want a vacation condominium that you can visit whenever you want, you're not gonna be renting it out um, 10 days of the year or more, that's the criteria, um, then there would uh, not be, you would not be subject to the owner occupancy rule, right? Because you would essentially be using it as your second home, that would be essentially owner occupied, and we would not need to worry about that 50% owner occupied rule if you're going with it as a second home. If you're purchasing it as your primary home, you're going to be living there full time. Um, then we are, like I said, you're not going to be subject to the owner occupancy rule because you would be an owner occupying it so that they're not going to care about, you know, other people's uh, usages of that property. Um, but if you can put 10% down on that purchase, then there would not be a budgetary review. If you're putting less than 10% down, say you're going FHA and it's three and a half percent, or you're going, um, you know, with the minimum down payment for, you know, for conventional, you're going 5%. Um, then on, in those circumstances, there would need to be a budgetary review. They're going to want to see those numbers and make sure that the finances uh, are in good shape. But other than that, if you can go 10% down, you get to waive that requirement and it's going to be a little bit easier for you to purchase that condo with a mortgage. So at this point, you might be saying like, oh my God, that's way too much information. That's way too many variables for me to have to try to figure out, you know, if it's warrantable. Um, I just want a condo. So I, I feel you. Um, as a borrower, if you're, if you're somebody who's looking to make that purchase, um, I would not expect any of my clients to do all this stuff on their own. Uh, this is something that, that we do routinely, that we, we help with the condo review. We have the questionnaire, the most updated version. You don't want to use an old version. We are the ones that usually send it to the association manager and, and follow up with them because sometimes it takes asking a few times before you get it back, right? But um, this is definitely, definitely something that you want to know on the front end before you've given a deposit, um, before you've maybe even signed the contract, um, because if you find out later in the process that it's warrantable, or let's say that it just takes three, four weeks for the association to get us the answers, and it, and it is warrantable, it just takes them a long time to get those answers, well, you know, that could, that could be a deal breaker there, just like it is a warrantable condo, but it could delay the process. So... Having a good team member, as I, I say, I know, I, I, hopefully I don't sound like a broken record, but having a good team, having people that know who to talk to, know what questions to ask and how to get the information or how to continue following up with people in a friendly way to get the information that we need, uh, I think is gonna be the recipe for success. So don't feel like you gotta do this all by yourself. Please, if you need some help, that's why I'm, that's why I'm here. Reach out to me. I'm happy to call association managers. Um, you know, especially once once we've got an application from you, and we can see. Okay, yes, you're somebody that uh, that could proceed to to closing. Happy to to make phone calls to associations and, and try to find out. Is this kind of going to be warrantable? Is this one you can purchase for your primary home, a vacation property, or or even as an investment? Um, and and what are those strategies? You know, what are some things that we can do 
uh, to try to help improve the odds that, that you can clear the warrantability requirements and make that purchase and get that condo. So that's the goal. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, as I said, I'm psyched to uh, have over 100 uh, subscribers. So uh, if you haven't done so already and you want to support the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button too, um, share these videos, drop me a comment, ask questions, reach out to me. My contact details are, are there in the description. So, and I'll put it here at the end of the video. But thank you so much for watching. Thanks to those of you that have supported thus far. And I will see you next time.